Welcome to the Research Unit for Indigenous Language video series on the sounds of Australian languages. This series will give you a very general introduction into the, some of the different sounds found in Australian languages. It's important to remember that while general statements about Aboriginal languages can be made, the sheer number and diversity of languages on the continent means that these statements will not apply to all languages, and speakers will have a local way these words are pronounced. Just look how many there are. We've chosen a few sounds to focus on which will relate to as many languages as possible, but please keep their general nature in mind. What we'll explore in this video series are the sounds which are noticeably different to English. We'll give you a guide on how to form the sounds and show how each sound is sometimes spelt in different ways. This video series features me as your host and also we're very lucky to have a researcher from the Research Unit for Indigenous Language, Dr Hal Stokes. Thanks very much for joining us, Hal. Pleasure, thank you. So this video is going to focus on what linguists call retroflexes. These sounds aren't found in Australian English, but they're very common in Australian or Aboriginal languages. Yeah, they are. So here are some examples where in this word you've got a retroflex nasal. Arna, Arna, Arna. And a retroflex stop. Majadabi, Majadabi, Majadabi. And a retroflex lateral. Alkenya, Alkenya, Alkenya. So, Hal, tell me, what is a retroflex? So, a retroflex is a sound where, which you make curling your tongue backwards in the mouth and usually touching um, a part of the roof of the mouth that's just behind the alveolar ridge. Arta. 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 Right, I can see in the ultrasound the tongue is moving back and kind of curling up. Yeah, and in Australian languages these things we often call retroflexes. Sometimes they're not actually made as far back as so you have to curl your tongue backwards, but they're much further back than, than a sound like da or na. Let's, let's go back a step. When you're making the da or na and you're talking about the tongue, which, which part of the tongue is being used there? Okay, so in these sounds you're using the tip of your tongue and you're touching what we call the alveolar ridge. So in da and na, you're touching maybe the alveolar ridge or slightly in front of it, just behind your teeth. Da, da, da. And so when you're talking about a retroflex, you're talking about a different part than the tip of the tongue? Well, so it's the tip of the tongue is the only part being used, but sometimes you're retracting it so far, you actually curl it backwards and you can use the bottom of the tongue tip instead. Arta. Arda. So the difference between arda and arda um, is like the tongue is touching approximately the same area in the mouth, but it's kind of doing different things to get there. Yeah, for sure. The main thing is to do with the gesture, I suppose, in the tongue. The, the, the first sound, arda, is made with the tongue hitting the roof of the mouth, going up straight and back down again, whereas arda, the retroflex sound, is uh, with a ballistic gesture, with this forward-moving gesture. So, arda. Da, arda, da, arda, da. Oh, you can see here with the da sound, the tongue just kind of flops down. Yeah, it just goes upwards and downwards. Whereas with this retroflex, the tongue tip actually moves forwards. Hmm, interesting. So, Hal, this is a tricky sound to make. Do you have any tips on how people can make this sound? Well, I suppose the only tip I have is to use the tip of your tongue. So move the tip of your tongue and, and curl it backwards. So, arda. Sometimes... The bottom of the tongue is actually touching the top of your mouth. And so I've noticed when you're saying these sounds, it sounds a little bit like there's an R sound in the vowel before it. Is that something that's common with these retroflex sounds? Yeah, we do find a lot of that kind of R colouring in the preceding vowel, so that R. And that really is showing that the tongue is starting to move because it's quite a complex gesture. Mm. And so it like changes this, the way the sound is coming out. It does, absolutely. Just, just by moving it into the correct position, you're, just, you're changing it. And this is something that um, phoneticians and linguists call coarticulation. So it's, it's the, the movement of two different sounds that are next to each other, the fact that they kind of work together as a unit. 
Fascinating. Okay, so here's an example of a retroflex at the end of the word. Try to listen to the way it makes the sound of the vowel change. Mart. Mart. And here is the same retroflex sound, but in the middle of the word. Marta. Marta. Okay, so the fact that this uh, retroflex kind of colours the vowel with mm. this R sound, is this one of the reasons that it is included in spelling systems? Yeah, it probably is. I, I think... Um using digraphs like an R and a D or an R and an N kind of shows that there is this kind of R-like quality in the vowel beforehand, yeah. Great. And is there any other kind of way that people represent retroflexes orthographically? Yeah, there's quite a few different ways, and, and probably the main way is either to use um, an extra character like an underline or a, a dot underneath a character. Great. Oh, well, thanks very much, Hal. No worries. Thank you. If you're interested in learning more about other sounds in Australian languages, be sure to check out our introductory video. We've got four other specialist videos as well, one on palatals, taps and trills, vowels and word initial velar nasals.